What's good guys, I'm Dave and in this video I'm gonna give you some rapid fire ideas of things to do while you're visiting Denver. Anytime you're visiting a city for the first time, it can be pretty time consuming to figure out what you're actually gonna do there. To help you find some things that work for you, I'm gonna cover a wide range of activities and interests so then you can pick and choose what sounds good to you. From outside stuff to inside stuff, free stuff to moderately priced stuff, breakfast to dinner, I'll cover a bunch of it here. Also, because things like skiing and snowboarding are over an hour out of Denver, I'm gonna focus on things in and around the city. In hopes of of saving you hours of googling, here are some of my favorite things to do in and around Denver. If you're active, moderately active, or you just know how to ride a bike, I'd highly recommend a tour with Mile High Bike Tours early in your trip to Denver. It's a great way to see a ton of different areas throughout the city on bike. You get some good photo ops and you get to ride along Cherry Creek. It's a lot of fun. If you can ride a bike, I do think that the bike tour is better than the Segway tours that are in Denver. You just cover a whole lot more ground. If you're coming to Denver during the warmer months, which I'd highly recommend, Mile High Bike Tours offers a twilight tour which is really cool because it happens at sunset you ride around and the temperature is pretty perfect and it's a great way to check out the city also if you're coming to denver during summer one of the best things to do throughout the whole united states is to do yoga on the rocks at red rocks amphitheater one yoga teacher from a local studio will teach a class for over 2,000 people at red rocks the sun comes up during the class and it's pretty magical. Now Red Rocks is a ways out from Denver and you would have to wake up at the ass crack of dawn to make the class, but this is one of those activities that you'll remember for the rest of your life. You do need a ticket to attend, so check if they're on sale for while you're in Denver and if they're sold out, usually people are selling them on StubHub for a really minor markup. It might go without saying, but a concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater by a band that you really like is a solid bucket list item you will never regret going to Red Rocks. Let's stick with this outdoor theme. We have a lot of great parks in Denver, and probably the most Denver and most popular one of them all is Wash Park. Since we are a landlocked state, this place pretty much turns into our beach during the summertime. People are out playing volleyball, laying out in the sun, riding bikes, and going on runs. It's a pretty great place to be. While a lot of people do end up going there, there's a big pond that's super nice to walk around, and it just feels very lively. There's a lot of college students and people who are young professionals there. You will see an incredible number of dogs, probably a lot of ducks too. You'll see how much Denver is really a dog city. If you're looking for something on the quieter side and you don't want to be around a ton of people, check out Cheeseman Park, especially if you love things that might be a little bit haunted. It's much quieter than Wash Park. It's a great place to go on a run or a jog, and sometimes there are little art festivals there, but it is built on top of a cemetery. And while Civic Center Park does offer some really good photo ops, I am on the fence about recommending it to people who are visiting Denver for the first time. I want to recommend it because I have great memories of being there when I visited Denver for the first time many, many years ago, but it's become so overrun with homeless people and very odd characters that it's tough to recommend. You could absolutely still get some good pictures here and there, but it's probably not for everyone. It's not what it once was. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a like to help more people find things to do in Denver now. Back to the video. Now let's talk about some quintessential Denver food. If you wanted to do a really solid Denver food day or spread them out during your trip, here's what I would do. I would do breakfast at Denver Biscuit Company or Snooze AM, which I know is a chain, but it started here. For lunch, I would go to Avanti, which most people would say is the best food hall in the city, or I would go to Cherry Cricket, which is the quintessential Denver burger spot. I would grab ice cream at Little Man Ice Cream, which is conveniently within walking distance of Avanti. For a nice dinner, I would make reservations at Sushi Den or Izakaya Den. If sushi isn't your thing, you could hit some more modern Denver American food at Root Down or Linger. If you wanna go super old school Denver, you can also hit up the Buckhorn Exchange, which is one of the oldest restaurants in Denver. They have some weird meats there and taxidermy all over the walls. If that's your kind of thing, cool. Linger is right next door to Little Man Ice Cream, and it was formerly a mortuary. Root Down, on the other hand, has really good, healthy American food, and it was formerly an auto body shop. Good food and unique buildings, both are pretty memorable when you're coming to Denver. I also made a whole video on my favorite restaurants in Denver, so I'll link to that in the description if you want to explore the city by mouth. One of the best parts about living in Denver is that we have every major professional sports team. I'm a Denver Nuggets season ticket holder, but I also know that sports aren't really everyone's thing, but bars are many people's things. The main reason why I bring this up is that we are a pretty solid sports bar city. If you come to Denver during football season, a lot of sports bars will be very, very full. People show up early in the morning and they sit there all day long watching NFL or college football. If I was visiting Denver and I wanted to have a cool sports bar experience, I would check out Blake Street Tavern, which is a huge sports bar in the city. 
if you're coming from like an LA, a New York, San Francisco, Chicago, you will be shocked at how big this place is. Especially considering the size, it's pretty nice inside, they have a great beer selection, and the food is pretty good too. If you're looking for a super cool bar experience, check out the Crow's Room inside the Oxford Hotel in downtown Denver. It's one of the older bars in Denver, and they make it look like it did when the city was coming out of Prohibition. It's a super memorable spot to grab a drink. Now let's try and fill your evenings after dinner, or before you go to sleep, or maybe before you go out again. If you are at all interested in plays or musicals, check out the DCPA, the Denver Center for Performing Arts. I'm actually surprised at how many people who live in Denver haven't been to the DCPA. It has a bunch of different theaters, all different sizes and personalities, and it's really, really nice inside. From plays in the smaller theaters to big Broadway musicals inside the Buell Theater, I have enjoyed pretty much everything I've seen at the DCPA. If you're into any sort of things about the arts, this is a really cool place to check out. Personally, I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy, and my favorite place to go to watch a show is the Denver Improv. This is also a great option if you're coming to the city by yourself. Instead of being a really small venue, like a lot of comedy clubs in big cities where you're sharing a tiny table with a stranger sitting next to you, the Denver Improv is really big. They have a full food menu, and you'll be very comfortably seated inside. If you want to unwind with some food and some laughs and you don't really have anything on your schedule, the Denver Improv is a great option. You can find tickets online and it's pretty rarely sold out. For another cool place to check out, definitely go to Union Station in Denver. Even if you're not taking the train, this is going to be the place to take those pictures for Instagram and social media that are going to let everybody know that you're in another city. It's really cool both outside and inside. There are also some really fancy restaurants attached to and inside Union Station. So if you're into fancy food, you can definitely find that there. It's one of those rare places that looks as cool on the outside as it is on the inside. And it's pretty shocking how well kept it is considering how many people come in and out of it every day. Many places like this in big cities either smell like pee, they have gum or stickers everywhere, and they're generally places that you don't wanna be. Union Station is not one of these places. It's a pretty classy place. If you're coming to the city with kids, of course you can go to the Denver Zoo, hit up the Museum of Nature and Science, or you can also go to the aquarium where you can book a reservation at the restaurant and be surrounded by large fish tanks and have them swimming around you while you eat. Outside of the city, there are some random things that might be interesting to your kids depending on what they're into. We go to the Butterfly Pavilion every now and then, which is north of the city and is kind of a cool place to see a bunch of butterflies. Also, the Celestial Seasonings Tea Factory is further north, and that's kind of fun. I don't know, some kids are into manufacturing things. If they're into that stuff, it's pretty cool. If your kids are a little older and you want to have fun at the same time, check out the Exotic Supercar Driving Experience in Golden. Most of the cars that you can drive with Exotic are two-seater sports cars like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, and McLarens, and it's a blast. Since you're driving in a pack with other people who signed up that day, you won't be hitting top speeds in these cars by any means, but it is a lot of fun to whip around the mountains in these supercars in beautiful scenery out there in Golden. My wife actually got this for me as a birthday present one year, and it's something that we still talk about to this day. Whether you're moving to Denver soon or you're coming to visit, I hope that this video gave you some ideas of things that you can do in and around the city. If you've made it this far, please give this video a like and share it with that friend that you're coming to Denver with. Thanks so much for watching and have a great time in Denver.